Namaste everyone. My name is Kena Shri. I'm a writer, storyteller, poet, and a corporate HR professional. Now I have a very funny name. Ironically, no one gets it right the first time. They either call me Kenya or Kela, or they call me Kana, which means quaint in Hindi, from Kina to Meena, anything but my name. And to add to the agony, I have a surname which is Shri. Now in India, Shri is supposed to come from South India, and I'm from the North. And uh, Shri's are supposed to be deeply spiritual people, like Shri, Shri, Kena, Shri. And I'm an atheist. So if you have a funny name too, God save you. And if still you're wondering what the name means, I actually Googled it for you. So I have a namesake, and that's a flower. It's called Kenna Lily. Now Google it if you want. And we share, strangely, a couple of characteristics. Characteristic number one is that this flower has fairly long leaves, and it is very colorful. Yellow, orange, deep red. Quite like me. I'm a riot of colors, I tell you. I write, sing, act, blog, paint, dance. I do storytelling, poetry, HR. Name it and I've done it. Characteristic number two is that Kena flowers are asymmetrical. So most of the people who know me also know that I find symmetry and perfection slightly boring. And number three is that Kena flowers have petals and sepals, very small, inconspicuous, hidden behind the extra vacant uh, stamen. And here lies my story. Because my story will never be about how robust or sturdy I may look or may not look, I don't know. It will always be about that vulnerable Kena hidden behind, who has a lot of scars, a lot of bruises, has gone through many ups and downs, failed more times than one, fallen umpteen times, but, but each time gathered herself, got up and got. Here's my story. My childhood was very comfortable, fairly comfortable. I was born to a progressive family of academicians, and at any given point of time, if you would have visited our home in Allahabad, you would have found the four of us, my parents, me, and my sister, in lone corners of the house, either reading books or talking a lot talking on world phenomena. We loved to converse. There would be arguments, debates, discussions, discourses. And at a very early stage in life, I real realized the power of conversations, the magic of conversations. Never give up on it, no matter what happens. Also, when I was young, I used to dabble in a lot of art forms. And my mother was totally horrified looking at me. She would often say that, you know, while I was average at most of the art forms, I was good at none. And she would wonder what, she, what would Kena end up doing. And her horror sort of came true because I eventually entered college. Then I went to the university, topped the university um, in the master's degree, cracked a national level examination, and got into a Maharatna PSU in which um, less than 1% of the country's youth make it. Now, this was the time around when um, I also got to marry the love of my life. So my husband and I, now husband and I, we used to know each other since teenage. And for a 20-year-old girl, everything was going particularly comfortable. So I had a steady job, a steady career, the man I loved, um, a purpose in life, yet something was missing. And to fulfill that something which was missing, I kept on procrastinating. OK, I'll do it tomorrow. There's a lot of time in life. But you know, that's the calm before the storm. It was the year 2012, and I felt a lump in my left breast. So I immediately rushed to the doctor, and after a battery of examination, MRI, FNSE, mammography, so on and so forth, it was diagnosed as sclerosing adenosis, which is a medical condition, but it is a benign condition, but it was on the verge of turning into malignancy, and the oncologist didn't want to take a chance with me. So I was immediately rushed to the operation theater, and after the surgery, two lumps were removed. The other was a fibrodenoma. So far, so good. I was in pain, definitely. But I was deeply, deeply grateful, because I knew I had managed life by the skin of one's teeth. However, the gratitude did not stay for very long, because in the next follow-up, the next year, I was diagnosed with three lumps in the other breast. 
Again, these were benign, but the condition, size, and texture of the lumps were such that it needed urgent removal. And this time, fate had something else for me. One of the lumps was placed deep inside the body towards the chest, for which an ultrasound-guided surgery was needed. They inserted a long wire inside my chest under local anesthesia, and I could see the blood, sweat, tears flowing down. I was in deep pain and agony. I went to the operation theater. The lumps were removed. I came out. As soon as entered, I entered the private ward. I was in high-grade fever. Apparently, the impacted area got infected. There was a lot of pus formation. And in no time, a series of medical interventions was, were done upon me to save my life. I was struggling to live one day more. And I did not know what to do. I was in deep, deep pain. And more than the physical pain, you know, the answers that you seek from life, and when you don't get it, it baffles you. Why me? What have I done? What wrong have I done? Who is going to take care of my little ones when I'm not there? So my elder one was in primary school. My younger one was just two years old. I yearned to live one day longer. And take it from me. When you go into, inside the operation theater, there's just one thought that is on your mind. Lord, give me just one day more to live. I do not know whether you sitting here, watching, listening, know about this power of now or not. But this one moment that you might have taken for granted is the one moment someone somewhere in the world is actually praying for to live. <laughs> in times of distress, Something that I learned. The entire world moves out. Only the ones who stay with you are the ones who love you unconditionally. I saw humanity in the eyes of the oncologist who was treating me because he wanted to heal me. In the hands of the caregivers, who again wanted to treat me, but other than them, there was only my own near family who was passing the strength to me as if saying, hey, you can't give up. You have to come back to life. Come back. And probably because of that strength, I know, I, I know how grateful I am when I say this, like one in a million cases, I made it. I made it. When I came back to normal life, I was a much sorted person. I knew my heart, I knew my head, and I refused to chase the hustle of life. I refused to be in the race of madness. I wanted to live each day at a time, each moment at a time, and relish every single pleasure of life, even if it was little, like the rain, the stars, the flowers, the touch of your loved ones, sunshine, your friends, your own people, everything. And every little bit that I thought was very petty, and I will do it sometime later, for instance, to dance, sing, blog, act, I knew that there was no tomorrow. Either it is now, or it is never. And whoever heard of this came to me saying, hey, you're an idiot. A jack of all trades is a master of none. It's not worth it. You're on the wrong path. And I sort of looked them into their eyes and I said, I don't want to be a master. I want to be a follower. And what's wrong with that? You know, the people are of different sorts. Some are like trees who want to grow tall and tall and tall and rise up in the sky. But then there are plants who want to stay grounded small, yet branch out in all directions to experience various facets of life. And I wanted to be that plant. Nothing wrong with either, but to know your heart is the point. And at that moment, I knew my heart. Yeah. Introspect, visualize, and I see this beautiful little plant blossoming in all directions. I wanted to be that plant. And I responded and took the plant. In the next few months and next few years, I had, I was doing a government job, full-time job. I'm a deputy general manager with the Maharatna PSU. I started writing articles for magazines and newspapers. I co and contributed stories to five published anthologies. I did storytelling, I still do storytelling and poetry uh, with various platforms. You would have heard of it, Taper Tale, Commune, Spill. Um, I took business storytelling to IMs, B schools, and other organizations because I'm very passionate about storytelling. However, I also got to work with my dream brands. Oh, how can I not mention about this? You know, dream brands like Rekha, The Times, 
foreign embassies in India, I got an opportunity to voice up for gender rights with She the People, for child rights with Cry. However, I knew it would come with a cost. Because once you decide to dabble in a number of art forms, your time and attention gets divided. Yet, I knew it was worth it. I knew the losses also. For instance, I knew that someday when I write a book, it will be just one or two. I will never become a celebrity author. I will never be that star performer whose ticket sells like hotcakes. But who knows that a niche audience might, might like my um, uh, art form. I knew my storytelling and poetry videos will never become viral enough. But who knows that my stories might reach the places it was meant to be. I will never have a lot of followers on social media, no. But who knows that my stories may impact one or two people and it is all that I want. I also know that I will never, as an HR, make it to the Forbes list of world's top 50. But I might end up contributing something to the field of HR and make it to the top 50 in India. And that's OK. I will never be wealthy enough to earn myself a luxury. But I might have enough to give to my family, to my children. And that's enough. At this moment, when I look back, I see having done all of these things, and I also see spending meaningful time with my family, especially my children and husband. And yet, every year, I go back to my oncologist for a follow-up, sometimes six-monthly, go through the procedures, because what needs to be done, needs to be done. And every year, I ask him, sir, do I get a lease of life this year? And he examines and tells me, OK, perhaps. Go ahead. And I'm very happy with that. In all of these years, when I look back, there are a couple of lessons that work like magic for me I'd like to share with you all. Number one is that no matter how cliched it sounds, life is beautiful. And it is not meant to be spent in the chase of becoming number one. Number two, journey with its ups, downs, bruises, scars, lessons is always more joyful and beautiful than the death. Nation. Number three, and it's very important, go fall in love with a man, with a woman, with a boy, with a girl, with animals, with places, with people. Each time you drown, remember, each time it's going to save you. Number four, sorry, thank you, please are the most profound words on earth, but after, it's benign. Ask me. And if you have a benign condition, be grateful. And last, not the least, a jack of trades is a master of none. That's what somebody told me. Well, oftentimes, better than the master of one. And that is how the full proverb goes, just in case you did not know the full quote. Oh, did I tell you about that last and best characteristics of the canna flower? It has a very hard seed coat. So apparently, it's difficult to break canna. And Germination of the plant is facilitated by scarification of the seed, which means that probably my scars have helped me grow. I cannot do without sharing a few words with you. And this is the most raw piece of mine, which I wrote a long, long number, uh, number of years ago, but it is still the most requested piece. And this piece is in Hindustani. Mein hai. I hope it reaches all of you. This is the four people. अगर ये चार लोग आपकी जिंदगी में हैं ना तो तालियों से बताइएगा प्लीज जब से होश संभाला है जानती हूं उन्हें मिली हूं पर मिली नहीं देखा है पर देखा नहीं पड़ोस में है पर पड़ोसी नहीं दोस्त तो हैं पर दोस्ती नहीं फिर भी बगल से मुझे जब वो ताड़ते हुए गुजरते हैं ऐसा लगता है पहचानती हूं उन्हें फिक्रदार हैं मेरे मुझे अपना मानते हैं मेरे दुख को मेरी खुशी को मुझसे भी ज्यादा वो जानते हैं मेरे माँ बाबा क्या खाक समझेंगे मेरे मन का रोग मेरे हर निर्णय पर अपना निर्णय देते हैं वो चार लोग तो बेटा करियर क्या चुना तुमने अरे ड्रोमैटिक्स वो तो नौटंकी है मॉडलिंग ऐश्वर्या समझ रखा है खुद को सूरत देखिए राइटिंग अरे हर कोई गुलजार थोड़े ही ना बनता है सलोन लो भाई बेटी ना ही बनेगी आपकी तो जो करो जैसे करो ये याद रखना कि चार लोग क्या कहेंगे 
लाइफ स्टाइल कैसी बना रखी है तुमने इतने छोटे कपड़े तोबा तोबा बुरी नजर को खुला आमंत्रण पार्टी ड्रग्स वगैरह भी लेती है क्या बॉयफ्रेंड सवा सत्यानाश इज्जत तो गई आपकी खाना नहीं बनाना आता शादी कौन करेगा भला तो जो करो जैसे करो ये याद रखना कि चार लोग क्या कहेंगे मेरे जान के दुश्मन वो चार लोग पहचानते तो नहीं पर उन चारों का चेहरा कुछ एक सा लगता है आंखें जरूर बड़ी हैं क्योंकि मेरी गलती पर खुल के लाल हो जाती हैं कुत्ते जैसी कान है धीमी सी फुसफुसाहट पर खड़ी हो जाती है सूप नखा की नाक है बात बात में कट जाती है मुंह नहीं सर्फ डंक है बातों से डसना जिसकी फितरत है जहाँ जाती हूँ जिधर जाती हूँ सबको डरा रखा है वैल्यू एजुकेशन की दुकान है मॉरल साइंस का पार्ट सबको पढ़ा रखा है तुम होगे बड़े तीस मार्क हाँ काम अनमोल किए होंगे पर सही है या गलत तय वो चार लोग करेंगे घर चलाना आता है तुम्हें ये क्या उठा के ले आई फर्नीचर गोदरेज लाना था ना शॉपिंग अकेले चली गई मुझे साथ ले जाना था ना हॉलीडे देखो गर्मियों में सिर्फ यूरोप ही जाना था ना डॉक्टर अरे कपूर को दिखा दिया चड्डा को दिखाना था ना तो जो करो जैसे करो चार लोग क्या कहेंगे मेरे ओपिनियंस पर भी उनके सवाल पॉलिटिक्स देखो कम्युनिस्ट बातों से पेट नहीं भरता रिलीजन एथीस्ट हो नरक में जगह नहीं मिलेगी तुम्हें जेंडर एल जी बी टी क्यू क्या जेंडर हुआ भला पेट्रियोटिज्म न लेफ्ट हो न राइट हो पेट्रियोट कैसे हो और फिर उनके अनगिनत पर्सनल सवाल इतनी बड़ी हो गई शादी कब करोगी शादी हो गई एक बच्चा कब करोगी एक हो गया दूसरा कब करोगी दो बेटियां हो गई एक बेटा कब करोगी पर सच तो ये है कि उम्र दर उम्र गुजरती गई और हर दिन इस डर में निकला कि चार लोग क्या कहेंगे पर ना इन चारों का के सवालों का कभी हुआ अंत ना हुए ये चार कभी खुश पर समय रहते समझ गई मैं और मैंने इनकी कोई बात ना मानी इनका कोई काम ना किया वो किया जो ठीक था वो किया जो सुंदर था वो किया जो जैसा था छोटा था मेरा था नाराज है मुझसे ये चार अब मेरे घर नहीं आते मेरा दरवाजा नहीं खटखटाते बात बात में अपने ओपिनियंस नहीं भिजवाते मुझे कभी कभी ना समझ अहंकारी एंटी सोशल भी बुलाते हैं और मेरे नाम से तकलीफ हो तो फतवा भी जारी कराते हैं पर अब वो पड़ा है कि मुझे उनकी फिक्र नहीं और उनमें मेरा जिक्र नहीं पर फिर भी एक दम्भ है उनमें दम अभिमान कहते हैं कल जब मैं शिथिल पड़ जाऊंगी कल तो यहीं कहीं कमरे से निकल के आएंगे वो चार लोग बांस की सेज पे मुझे कंधा देने या मेरी मैयत पर फूल चढ़ाने पर उन चार कमजोर कंधों के ऊपर तटस्थ तो बैठकर अपने रिबेलियन का बोझ डालती हुई अपने जीवन की अकेली रचना कर बन अपनी कहानी स्वयं लिख जाऊंगी हार कर भी जीत जाऊंगी और जीत कर भी हार जाएंगे मुझसे मेरे अपने बताओ तो कौन वो चार लोग थैंक यू सो मच